the first of the Japanese products. Yes, indeed, this is the first Japanese product. Actually, it's not the first, it's actually the third, because the first off I, to be with, actually showed this Shodo phone and the Sushi Changer a long while ago. But uh, after a big American break, we now have some more Japanese products. This one, of course, being the uh, Morphin Blaster from Tokumi Sentai. Go Busters. Now I first teased this item a long while ago, so if you ha are seeing this video, congratulations, meaning that you've obviously stayed to see the initial review of this product. Um, again, if you have left and come back, that's fine as well, but without any other quarrels and blomps, we have the Morphin Blaster in its box, because I have for most of the, actually for about half of the Japanese products that I have for Super Sentai, they have their boxes. Um, that's because they've come from specific places online, because they don't sell these in the UK. Um, like with most uh, reviewers on YouTube of this kind, well maybe not, well, maybe slightly more high quality than my videos of course. Um, Anyway, other people that have these products are generally do, do generally buy them online, like me. Um, now I got this Morphin Blaster from it was eBay. Um, I'm not going to go into discussing which one is the correct site for you because really that's a personal issue if you are seriously thinking about buying some of these Super Sentai products. Anyway, this is from 2012 and this is indeed from Tukume Sentai Go Busters which was adapted into Power Rangers Beast Morphers. Now let's get the obvious out of the way. Where's the American version of this product? Well, it was released but it was a massive disappointment. For you see, the American version was just like a Nerf gun and was not as good as this. Meaning that when the uh, American version did came out, did come out, which was called the uh, Striker Morpher, when it came out I decided to completely skip out on it um, and not buy it because I immediately preferred the uh, Japanese version and therefore I have the Japanese version with me now. So, uh, Thanks a lot, Hasbro. Um, anyway, right, we have the Morphin Blaster on the front of the box. Looking good. Um, we have Beat Buster and Stag Buster, like a six ranger duo on the um, side. On the side. This text down here, I believe, says Morphin Blaster. I could be wrong. It does say Morphin Blaster in English text at the bottom in white there, which is weird. We have Boost Up for Buster which is the finishing attack noise because believe it or not a lot of the phrases these not all the phrases but some of the phrases that this comes out with are indeed in english odd we have um this means lights and sounds plus the gear series zero five because they they used to release these in a series i think you had the morph embrace the transpod the ichigan buster Sorgan Blade, I think. I think there was one more because I think Dry Blade was marked as number six, but I, I can't remember. Um, change it goes from self firing mode to blaster mode, which is something that, that the American version cannot do. On the top, of course, you have the Ghost Go Buster's logo, along with another shot of Beat Buster and Stag Buster, plus another Beast of Buster and the Super Sentai logo. On the top, you have like a cool silhouette of the of the two, um, of course, with the, the GB logo behind them, which stands for Go Busters or Grid Battle Force if you're American. On the bottom, we have another shot of Go Beast Buster, Beat, Beat Buster, and Stag Buster. On the side, we have another shot with its cell phone mode. And on the other side, it's basically demonstrating how the. Um, it's basically showing off how the um, little voice activation commands work because, yes, this does indeed have a microphone in it. Looking at the back of the box, we have all the detailed product shots. We have the Morphin Blaster here with its in gun mode. We have it in cell phone mode right here, which is um, can also be activated with the um, microphone and commands for the various 
noises or like change mode or finishing mode which is the two things that this does and also in blaster mode and we have the text of doom in the bottom along with sad pac-man which is indeed an emgo reference great um also we have another like kind of like pac-man character here hmm which i uh, did enjoy looking at right we should open this box because i do indeed keep these things in the box the flaps don't really have anything, there's just a QR code that I don't know what it leads to. And uh, if we take the inside out, we will be able to look at the contents. Now one thing I will stress, well, not stress, but one thing I will say is that if you order these offline, like from like a shop like Mandarake, or boxed from CS Toys or certain people from eBay, they will include they include little leaflets. And I oh, oh I really appreciate that because these are like little bits of promotional material from the time. This is like a a little thing from 2012. It's like a souvenir from 2012. So what do these two little leaflets um have to do with GoBusters, right? This yellow one here, talking about anti GoBusters. This one, from what I'm able to figure out. This is basically um, little snack boxes, I think. Um, and they came with little cards, co co collectible cards. And the, and I, think, I think they're like ID cards or stickers, I don't know. Now the important thing here is that despite the fact this apparently came with a, you know, Beast Buster Stag Morpher's weapon, Morpher, Stranger, sorry. This only goes up to the first three Go Busters, meaning that um, of course, gold and silver aren't in here, and, uh, this little booklet thing here, Tokumi Sentai Go Busters, this is for the, um, curry packages, or the sausage packages, I think, and we have a complete set of the cards in here, look, there was 24 cards, again, this goes up to, this only has blue, red, blue, yellow with their, Go Buster forms, there's one with all three plus also their body roids, different shots with the Morphin Brace, Ichigan Buster. Is that one want the Sorgan Blade? It doesn't, doesn't look like it. Uh, mm. I know there is one with your call there. And we have them with their three Buster machines. More shots of them with their various body roids and the little, I think that's the Go Buster, Ichigan Buster special mode, I think. With the also Chudenik in cycle mode and some more product shots, more shots of the other characters here. So it's very good how they include like a little checklist of this stuff because, um, I don't know, that's like a, a little product feature. Anyway, we indeed have the little product itself. And in case you're wondering what this extra slip of paper inside here, it says it's basically a little. I'm not going to show it because it does include an email address of the seller. It does include, uh, it's basically just a note saying, oh, if you like my product, please leave it five stars. Which is all well and good. So this is indeed the Morphin uh, Blaster, as you can see. Now, of course, this does indeed have one mode I can show off before I show off the other mode. So let's quickly... Get it into that mode first. I'll explain the intricacies of it later. This is it in phone mode. What do I think of its phone mode? Um, does it look like a cell phone? Not at all. It looks very sci-fi. Sci-fi, I, I will say that. Um, one thing that I don't think they saw through is to access the keypad and technically use the phone. You've actually got to move this down because the keypad's under there. But in the show, they show this little uh, outline here as like a screen. So, uh, which is it? Mm, I'm not entirely sure. Um, back. It's got some... Uh, I must say they've used quite a lot of gold paint. A bit of silver paint on here. And on here, too. They've used a lot of gold paint. Uh, this is a microphone. We'll get to that. Um, Grey button. Again, we'll, we'll, we will get to that. This is a LED. Again, we'll get to that. I'll keep saying that. Um, 
And to again get to on on the back, it's done in like a nice matte black finish. There's two big buttons. There's a Scobusters logo speakers right here, and this little thing here. This is spring loaded. This is actually the trigger guard. To transform it to a blaster mode, it's actually it looks quite complicated at first, in my opinion. But I think it actually gets easier to do the more you look at it. You've got two arrows. Uh, one faces the right hand side here, and the other one faces the left hand side. To get it to blaster mode, oh, you see this? It's locked in self -line mode. To release it, you've got to enter blaster mode. You've got to press the left hand button. This one, the one on the right side. Because if you do that, this whole back part will become released. And when we do that, the front gun muzzle comes out. And also, you can move, pull out the handle. Now, it only locks back in when it's in all the way. It locks back in in a second position when you pull it down. Like this. This is, it's gun mode. And very, there's actually very small components that get revealed in gun mode because just the gun handle comes out there's nothing really paint going on here there's no sad pac-man on here so i can't really tell you about that triggers here which works again i suppose this is the little trigger guard as well and the gun muzzle is actually quite interesting because they did choose to use metallic blue and silver on it again without without an orange cap on it because this is from japan again this is Spring loaded, you can push it back all the way. To transform it back into cell phone mode, you've just got to push the other button here. Pull this up. You can let go of the button when it's being pulled up because it only locks back in when it's down. And push it back in. Right, and I think we should get around to doing the sounds. Um, also, before, before I do that, I'm just going to point out here that this keypad does nothing it's a sticker they did use metallic blue for some of the stickers you've got one two three the settings cog and um, the two buster machines for silver and gold that's the mantis or the rhino beetle I'm calling it a mantis naughty naughty that's hasbro that is it's a rhino beetle and a stag beetle you got the i think that's buster hercules i think that is and also great book go buster Generic Ghost, Ghostbusters logo, call, hang up an email. These stickers do nothing. This this does nothing. This is a sticker, which I'm not too bothered by. Anyway, now we can get onto the sounds this little guy makes. There's an off switch right here, and if you turn it on, you will see the sounds and lights. That's the standard activation noise for all Ghostbusters items, I believe. There is an LED here in this little window. And the the one thing, the one main thing that the cell phone does, got a little grey button here, and if you push it, you will hear this. Call mode. New game. So you've officially got to push the grey button down. You'll hear call mode, and then you need to say something into the mic or or like rub your finger along it like this. And it will come out with the sound. Now these are all, all in Japanese. And I don't know what the translations are. So you'll need to excuse me on that. The light also lights up in um, time with the call mode. Another interesting thing is. This is actually. The spring mechanism is actually quite loud. Which means you could do this. And it will register it as a sound. Which means you could do something like this. See that? I was able to activate the voice line without actually saying anything by moving the actual visor down. Let's have a look at the, at the rest of the sounds. After a uh, unforeseen jump cut, I can continue with the review of this item. Now, unfortunately, I will have to redo all of the voice lines again but that shouldn't be a problem because i only played about two but i will have to redo them um but that really shouldn't be a problem so we press the button and then we have to 
speak into the camera or move some across the camera speak into the mic and move this across the mic and it'll come back with a phrase i think there's a, um only about like six or seven phrases because it's meant to be bj stag who comes out with them or the silver ranger who comes out with them so let's start Okay, so that is all of them. And now we're going to do the blaster mode of this item, which is the main morphing uh, mode for this particular changer. And to get to morphing mode, you go to the back and you see the left arrow. You have to push this button down. And while you're pushing it down, you pull out this back part. which pulls out the gun muzzle as well. Now, it won't come out with a noise until you move the gun grip all the way down. And of course, there is a noise when you release it as well by pushing the other button to move it up. Now, the interesting thing about this, right, is that while the handle is up like this and not down while it is up it's the the device is still in call mode meaning that if you push the trigger to the gun you will not hear the blaster firing noise like in, right so in gun mode you have a trigger and pushing the trigger in gun mode does this It plays the firing noise. But if the gun handle is up like this, the trigger won't play the, the uh, firing the firing noise. It'll play the uh, the call mode noise. Meaning that I didn't do anything. Meaning that this grey button here is just like a trigger that pushes down the trigger of the gun. Also, this LED right here shines through this little space here. As you can see from the fact I'm moving, I was moving it in and out. So now we're going to show off what the gun mode does. Uh, the slow firing noise is by pushing trigger is this, like you've already said. You can also do rapid fire if you want. This is where you can also move out the little visor too, and this spins all the way round but it literally does nothing it is made of translucent orange plastic which i i do like they do like their sunglasses in go in go busters um and this gray button down here which is the activation button for the call mode this does nothing because it's it, it was pushing down on this trigger Meaning that if this button did something now, it, it would be making this noise. Which would be making no sense, because it's a gun. It would be making a gun noise in phone mode. Anyway, to change into uh, Beat Buster and Stag Buster, because it's the same noise for both of them, you need to push down the trigger. It's morphin' time! Now 
not really paying attention to my reviewing capabilities, probably because it's um, probably yeah, it's I think it's like eleven. It's 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 eleven p.m. on my on my brain's a, a little bit fried. Um, <laughs> um, so what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to push down the trigger, and then you're going to hear a standby noise. When you push the trigger again, um, you can then say something in, into the mic, and then it'll do a, a henching noise. So let's do that. Standby noise. Last time I looked, this this standby noise is on YouTube, by the way, if you want to listen to it. And uh, you can say anything into this; it'll still work. In fact, let's do it again. Of course, it'll work just by doing this too. Anyway, when you are in morphed mode or range of mode, again, my brain's a little bit fried. Um, this gun will still make the random firing noises. However, this time, when you hold down the trigger, you will get the final attack noise, which will be followed up by um, a microphone cue again. Um, and then when it's done that, you'll get a standby noise. The same standby noise, actually. And then after that, you can push the trigger and get the final attack noise. So let's do that now. Most up for Buster. And that's just about everything this thing does. wasn't registering the fact that the handle was back in. What do I think of this item's functionality? Um, I think it's pretty okay. It's a lot better than what Hasbro had to offer us, that's for sure. Um, I think it's a pretty nice item. Um, but one thing I will say is that I don't know if this is, this, I don't know if this is because of my hand size, but the gun, I seem to be able to, able to hold the gun handle just fine, which if you've seen the previous reviews for Power Rangers, you will know that is a absolute godsend because some of the Power Rangers items that they don't fit in my hands yeah I know I'm not the target demographic of these items but yeah you know um, I mean come on just look at the Terramorpha I think I reviewed uh, quite recently actually I could barely fit my hand into that same with the Lionfire Morpha I couldn't fit my hand into any of those so to see a thing that actually fits my hand size Thank God! Thank God for that! Anyway, overall, this item, yeah, I, I, apparently some people think that it, it's kind of lacking in functionality. Yeah, I can see where they're coming from, but I don't know if it's just because I have so much hate for the how Hasbro, how badly Hasbro mucked up uh, their rendition of this item, but I think this version is just fine. I think it's okay. Oh, not as not okay as in like okay mid. I think it's okay as in it's screen accurate. It does what it's supposed to do. It's not like the Hasbro version in, in any way. I mean, come on, do you see a dart shooter down this barrel in any way? No, you don't. So, in my eyes, <sighs> Ludus reference. In my eyes. Um, if you want to buy. Um, a, like a, a more screen accurate version of the Striker Morpher, you should not go for the Hasbro release. You should go for, for this. Because this one is actually, a, a, this, this, this one's a lot better. It has, it actually has lights and sounds. Again, unlike the Hasbro version, it doesn't have a dart shooter. It's not Nerf Cross compatible. If you, um, I know I'm speaking, probably not speaking to a, 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 a wide enough audience to say this, but if 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 you have a kid who likes Power Rangers, and and like wants a replica of this Morpher from the TV, I recommend getting them this version. Yeah, I know it'll be more expensive, and I know it might not be the easiest to find. But if you do a little, 
a bit of poking around, you might find one at a decent price for a thing shipped from Japan because I can't remember exactly how much we paid for this. It certainly wasn't cheap, cheap, but I I think personally, I think that's a that's a much better price to pay for a proper deluxe item compared to a deluxe item from a from a certain American company that doesn't do what it's supposed to because I remember um logging on to I think it was I what am I saying logging on to I remember seeing um because I loaded I loaded up um greenranger.com I think it was the site with the Power, with the Power Rangers toy guide. I remember logging onto that site and having a look at the the striker morphin package on that site because it says toy guide and I thought what the hell is this is this all they're doing and I'm pretty sure most toy reviewers at the time thought that too in fact I mean guys like Dawson Rider at the time um I'm actually willing to believe I've got reason to believe that when the striker morpher came out in America as a toy I've got reason to believe that they did expect a more deluxe version to come out and I'm pretty sure they were very disappointed when no when nothing did um in fact, the final nail in the coffin for Hasbro here is that in the UK, at least, you know, we had um, a Power Rangers Beast Morphers magazine. Um, I think it was in uh, issue four or issue five. I can't remember. In one of those two, I think. Um, they had like a, a cheapy version of the Striker Morpher, which still shot darts, but it transformed into the phone mode. Um, so, which is something that the... Um, the deluxe version can't do. The only problem is it's like mirrored, so you know you're screwed when the cheap mag magazine version has more functionality than your proper deluxe, actually in the toy stores version. So that's a bit bad. Um, don't forget that was on Hasbro's, uh, I think their second year of being in the whole Power Rangers business. I mean that's another problem because. Um, when they used to release toy lines for Power Rangers, because apparently they're handing the toy rights over to Playmates, um, I think they're called the, the guys that handled a certain Ben 10, the, the, uh, the Ben 10 reboot toy line. So, I mean, I trust them, sure. Uh, but, mm, innocent until proven guilty, I guess. Um, when Hasbro had these uh, Power Rangers toys coming out, they used to be awfully delayed. I mean, come on. Um, in 2019, Power Rangers Beast Morphers Season 1 showed on the American and British TV screens. Um, as far as I remember, I think it was also shown on Australia and some other parts of the world as well, I think. Um, when that was shown on TV, um, the Gold and Silver Rangers already debuted, but the toy for the Striker Morpher, which is their Morpher, didn't come out until, like, a year later. So, um, that's really bad. That's actually really terrible. In fact, I remember... Could I move this out of the way for a bit? I remember for Power Rangers Dino Fury, um, which is an uh, adaption of Kishiri Sentai Resolve, it's the funny uh, Dino Knights one. Um, I remember seeing that the um, seeing the show debut with the uh, the Gold Ranger and um, thinking, oh, it's a Gold Ranger. He's got his um, gun in the blaster. Um, and I remember being surprised when they only came out with the a toy of the Moser Blaster and the Moser Dagger literally at the very last second, just as Dino Fury Season 2 was about to finish. So they really did leave it until the very last minute before they released that merchandise. And I mean, that's really confusing. I mean, I'm still talking about Hasbro. I'm still talking about a toy company. I'm still talking about the people who like appear at toy fairs and have a massive heavyweight marketing campaign as they call it so I'm talking about a company that does all of that and yet still somehow manages to screw to screw their own release schedules and quality up I mean come on that's why I have this in my hand right now seriously because this version is actually much more superior than the America version, and that's why I only have this version, because I remember being so disappointed when I saw that the magazine cheapy version was actually better than the proper deluxe version, and that was really shocking, because again, Hasbro is a toy company, and the one thing they can't get right are the toys. 
So, um, that wasn't on my bingo card for uh, this decade. <laughs> That's all chiming mode does. Turning it on and pushing the trigger will give you these sounds for the gun. So that's all that does. Um, now for the individual Power Star sounds, we're going to start with the main six ranges. This is the Red Ninja Power Star. And again, setting it will give you, setting any Power Star will give you this sound. Then removing it will give you that. And if you set it and push the trigger, We'll give you that finishing noise that the that the original Ninja Battle Morpher already had. So this already uses reuses quite a lot of sounds already. But again, what else were they were, were they supposed to do? Anyway, the spinning sound is the same. So it doesn't I don't, doesn't say what star it is. It just says the word activate in this case, and it has a sound effect. Um, the sound effect you just heard was not lifted from any Ninja toys. This is just like a generic like laser robot sound. Again, pushing the trigger will do nothing except make it the final finishing attack noise. So I'm not going to show that off anymore. Oh. There, didn't register the fact I would remove the flipping sing, the flipping star. Right, and now we have the blue Ninja Power Star. The blue. Activate. Activate, and again, like another generic, generic noise. Like another generic laser noise. Then we have the yellow Ninja Power Star. Activate another generic, another generic noise. Um, then we have the uh, the white ninja power star, which is the one that's really hard to spin. Activate, Activate again another like generic no laser noise. Then we have the pink power star. Activate, Activate. yeah another generic. Generic laser noise. Then we have the the gold ninja power star here. Activate. So that the default noise for charming mode was this sound, I think. Activate another generic laser noise. That's not a surprise there. And now we're gonna do the attack stars. Starting with the element star in fire mode. said engage plus a fire noise. Now, the difference between the regular ranger stars you just heard and all and these and most of the remaining ones is that um, these sound effects were indeed lifted from the Ninja toys. So the fire sound effect for this star here was lifted from the Goton Ninshuriken in fire mode. Then we have the element star in water mode. I like a water sound effect. Again, this was lifted from the Goton Ninchuriken in water mode. And then we have the Storm Star, Storm Star Hurricane mode star, which is the because this item originally came with these two stars here. So the Storm Star Hurricane mode does this. I believe that's lifted from the Furai Ninshuriken in, I think it's wind magic mode. It says Kaze magic. I think Kaze means wind. Again, some of these stars can be a pain to remove. Then we have the Storm Star in lightning mode. Engage. 
Some of the effects probably lifted from the full round in Shuriken in Lightning Mode, or I think it's Kaminari Magic, which means uh, Lightning Magic or Thunder Magic, I think. And then we have the Zord Stars, I think. We have the Kodiak Zord. No, that's a lie. Sorry. The Dragon Zord Star comes first. The Dragon Zord. That's a dragon sound effect. Now, the, the funny thing about this is that I have the star from the Ninja Wood that sound effect was lifted from. Just let me get it quickly. It's in here. Now, again, you'll be seeing this on a future video. Let's just uh, get it out and. Uh... It's exactly the same sound. Also, this means the Zord Star um, Shuriken sounds were lifted from the regular Rangers Shuriken. So in this case, the, the this star sound was lifted from the Owl Ninja Shuriken. Oh, the blue Ninja Shuriken at least. Then we have the Kodiak Zord star. Which is like a like, like a howling noise. This was lifted from the Shuro Ninja Shuriken, or the White Ninja Shuriken. Then we have the uh, Ninja Fusion Zord. Um, or the Ninja, or, it calls it the Ninja Fusion Sword, although this is the Ninja Ultra Sword's colours. It's meant to be gold and not red. Um, for this one, I don't know. I honestly, I honestly do not know. I do not know where that sound effect was originated from. It might be American made, it might be Japanese original, it might, I don't know. Then we have the... Blaze Star. Fire noise. Considering that there's a Japanese equivalent of this star called the Gekiatsu Ninchuriken, I think this was lifted from that sound. St this was lifted from that star. Shuriken. Sorry. Then we have the. Now we just have some American only stars. So these will all have American made sound effects. First one is this Ninja Master Mode Shuriken. That is the same chainsaw sound that the Ninja Master Blade makes. So that's American only because that's an American only weapon. Then we have the Lionfire Red Red Star. Like a lion roaring noise. Then we have the legendary red star. Now all of these will make the exact same noise. A robot noise. This makes no sense. It's not a Zold star, it's a ranger star. Identity crisis. Then we have the a team star. Again, any team star will play a noise this the same noise as the Zeo's star. Like a team attack noise. So that is all of the sounds that this makes of my star collection. Again, it's got its faults, it's got its errors, but I think they tried their hardest ultimately. This light needs some charge. Um, it's got some flaws, but they still did their they still they still did their part to include another item that has a reader in it. And again, because we're starting the uh, the uh, Japanese reviews, I must stress again how big. The how small the American stars are, how small the American stars are compared to the um, original Japanese Nin Shuriken. Again, these will become this will be coming soon on a review video in the future. So, if you want to see that, make sure to stay tuned. Ned, uh...